Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video from me, Pickle Sparker Reviews. Now I haven't made a video on the channel in ages, to be quite honest with you. That's mainly because I've been quite busy, as you can notice. It's a new background, that's because I'm in uni now, I have been for the past couple of months. So understandably I've been quite busy and I haven't really had time to make many videos, despite the fact that ultimately there's been lots and lots of news that's come out in the past like a month or so. Obviously we had... The Power of the Doctor, Jodie Whittaker's final story is The Doctor. That came out about a month ago now. I did actually record an initial reaction like I have done for all of Jodie's last few episodes. However, the footage, um, the mic didn't really work properly, so the footage was really quiet and it, it was essentially unusable, which is really annoying because I spent like, it was like an hour long just rambling about the power of the doctor because i thought it was a really interesting episode to talk about especially after initial initial broadcast and i still do want to do a video on the power of the doctor maybe re-watching it to see how it holds up because it's one of those episodes that has so many surprises and so many things returning and so many things that we didn't expect that ultimately it's such you know a blast to talk about after the episode initially airs but it's one of those that does it hold up once you know everything that's going to come once you know that the classic doctors are coming back the classic companions the nice scenes regarding the regeneration once you know how much of the goat that sasha dewan is in that episode you know does that episode still hold up i don't know um i do want to do a video on that to see but Ultimately, that's not what we're going to be talking about today. Um, I do want to talk about that in a separate video, but I mainly want to talk about the future of Doctor Who as on the day of recording, it is Doctor Who Day, the 23rd of November 2022, almost said 2063 there. Obviously, that was the original air date of Doctor Who. It's been 59 years since then. Obviously, a year on, it will be the 60th anniversary which is what I want to talk about today. And you might say, George, you've done plenty of videos talking about the 60th anniversary, and while you're one of the few people who aren't really excited for it, and that's true, but we've got some more details, lots of my thoughts um, on that big video I did. I think it was probably my last video, actually, it shows how long it has been since I've actually made a video. Um, mainly speculating on RTD2 and David Tennant and whether he'd be the 14th Doctor, how that would relate to Shuji Gatwa's Doctor, and mainly why I really didn't like it from a story side of things and also from a behind the scenes side of things. And that still remains, if not worse, because we do know that David Tennant is the 14th Doctor. That has actually been confirmed. He is known as the 14th Doctor now. Shuji Gatwa is the 15th Doctor, which I don't like. Um, David Tennant isn't the 14th Doctor because he's not a new incarnation of the Doctor. That, like, if we don't call the Doctor that Tennant regenerated into in Journey's End the 11th Doctor, do we? Despite the fact it's a separate incarnation because it's still the 10th Doctor, so we just don't give that incarnation a number it's the meta crisis i see no reason why if you did want jodie whisker to regenerate into david tennant why you couldn't have given this new david tennant doctor new david tennant doctor i'll get on to that um just a title like the war doctor or a fugitive doctor because there's a precedent for that like maybe rtt doesn't like doing that but i don't know why um, because people defend this like, oh, well, the numbering doesn't make any sense anyway. The logistical reasoning of the numbering went out of the window, essentially when we introduced John Hurt, which yes, in a sense, I agree. But then if that's the case, then why would you feel the need to give him a number? Surely if that's the case, you wouldn't feel, you know, any problem with giving him, um, you know, a prefix um, like John Hurt or Joe Martin, um, because he's not a main incarnation. He's literally only here for free stories like he you know like he's going to leave after free stories when you bring him in so he's only like a finite doctor like he, he isn't a main doctor so we shouldn't be giving him a number as well as the fact that david tennant is the 10th doctor like he just is that's his number and this looks like it's just going to be the 10th Doctor again. Like, people might have said, and Russell can say, that ultimately I brought David Tennant back because I want to see him do something different. I want to see him play a different incarnation of the Doctor from what he did. And I do have some issues about that because ultimately how? How can David Tennant play an incarnation of the Doctor different 
from the Doctor that he played as the Tenth Doctor, because ultimately that Tenth Doctor incorporated so much of like his personality and his mannerisms into that Doctor, as every Doctor does. And a Doctor actor is so skilled at playing a certain version of the Doctor, because that's why they played it. They found a character that was best suited to their skill sets, and the problem is, is that is so distinctly Tenant to the Doctor, that if you were to move so far away from that, Either it wouldn't really suit Tennant, or it wouldn't really be that much of the Doctor. But this Doctor, even, you know, isn't that dissimilar from the Tenth Doctor. Just based on the fact that we know that he's using that Cockney accent that Tennant put on. He's not using his natural Scottish accent, which, if you were bringing David Tennant back to play a different version of the Doctor, then the first thing you'd think of is let him use his natural accent. He's not doing that. And then the regeneration scene in The Power of the Doctor was disappointing for me. From Jodie's side, I wasn't a big fan of the final scene. It felt incredibly quick, um, weirdly framed as well, that, this whole bit. Um, and I wasn't a big fan of the, the final line, tag your it. I, some people like it. To me, it, it just feels really anticlimactic. Like, I don't really know what it means. It, it, it doesn't feel perhaps as grandiose as other Doctor's final lines, like as poignant. I don't know people, some people don't like the grandiose nature of the modern Doctor uh, spe regeneration speeches, and I understand why personally I'm a fan. But even if you look at some of the classic era lines um, that final Doctors have, you know, even like Tom Baker at the end, but the moment has been prepared for. Peter Davison, you know, having his final words be Adric, you know, that, that's great. You know, a tear, Sarah Jane, um, even. Keep warm, which I know technically isn't the first Doctor's final line now because of Twice Upon a Time. Yeah, like you line up all the Doctor's final lines and tag your it, it just kind of pales in comparison, really. But then the regeneration into Tenant, that final scene is the worst. Actually, no, that's not because I don't like um, the Colin Baker one, like Change My Dear and Seems Not a Moment Too Soon. It's iconic, like because of the lines, but it is not a great introduction to his Doctor, but, you know, that side, it's one of the worst, um, you know, post-regeneration scenes for a Doctor, in my opinion, because ultimately it really doesn't dissuade in my concerns that RTD2 is just going to be a retread of RTD1, and this is all just going to be a nostalgia fest in 2008 again, and purely catering to those 2008 fans, and this actually isn't going to go in a new direction. Um, which people have been saying, you know, why would RTD come back if you were to do the same thing? Why would Tenant come back if you just were to do the same thing? This is a new direction, just because it's bringing back these old people. It's going to be new, it's going to be fresh. The way his first scene is literally just two callbacks to the Tenth Doctor. Like, I know these teeth I think is quite nice, because, you know, it, A, it is, it is a callback to, you know, David Tennant's first scene, where he's like, new teeth, that's weird. But also, it's a bit more subtle. Um, you know, and it's quite nice for the doctors to recognise recognise that. I thought that was quite good. But you can only have one or the other. You can either have that line or the what 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 line, which I didn't like. A because we all saw that coming, and it, it just is too much of oh, this is the tenth doctor again. What what what? Like that scene didn't tell us anything about this new doctor or how he's going to be, or you know, it really you know give us anything to be honest with you, other than oh my god, the tenth doctor's back, which I would have been good if we didn't know it was going to be him like we got nothing of the personality it was just the tenth doctor again because he's just quoting the tenth doctor like that was just a scene of callbacks from the tenth doctor it didn't give us anything new and then i was sat there not really excited to see david Tennant back because you miss something that you get from the post regeneration which is oh my god it's a new doctor i cannot wait for them to come back in their series you're just like oh Tennant's back again we all knew it and we all called the what 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 line. So the fact that they were just purely tenant quotes, like purely tenth doctor quotes, you know, really does imply that yeah, he's got a new costume, yeah, he looks slightly older, but not even that much. But ultimately, he is just going to have the personality of the tenth doctor. So my point is, a, why didn't you just bring the tenth doctor back? You know, you could have not had, you know. Jodie have to degenerate into David Tennant and set this weird precedent, which I'm also going to get onto because some people have been trying to defend that and note that argument doesn't stand up for me, but I'll get onto that later. You didn't have to set this weird precedent of degeneration, which for me sets is a really bad precedent to set for the future of the show, and I actually think it could actually kill the show off. 
But also then you didn't have to make him the 14th Doctor because he isn't. He isn't. This is just going to be the 10th Doctor again. It's the 14th Doctor that he's just a degeneration into the 10th Doctor because he's going to have the exact same mannerisms of David Tennant. So he's not the 14th Doctor. Yeah, he's going to be an incarnation of the Doctor, but he's not the 14th Doctor because that is a new mainline incarnation of the Doctor. And he isn't. He just isn't. And, you know, at the end of the day, I would be interested to see where you could take David Tent playing a new incarnation of Doctor. I'm not in love with it. I'm not in love with the Doctor degenerating into an old face. I've said this before in other videos. I don't know how much I'll touch on it here. I may touch on it, but you all know my thoughts about how this feels like a very cynical um, and calculated move by the BBC to, you know, completely neglect the ethos of the show just to try and rely on nostalgia and bring back viewership of a time when the show was popular. The BBC doesn't think the show can be popular again and has given up on trying to get in a new audience even though change and renewal and bringing in new people is what the show has strived upon and why it has survived for you know nearly 60 years. But the BBC doesn't think it can do that now so they've hopped on the nostalgia trend and they're just trying to pretend it's 2008 again to bring back everyone um, who stopped watching the show when Tennant left and, you know, ultimately pretends that, you know, you can go from the end of time to um, whatever the first, you know, 60 of special is and you will be fine. Um, and that's what it seems to be, pretending that what happened in the 2010s of Doctor Who, you know, didn't happen and tr purely focusing on Tennant because he's the most marketable Doctor in a very cynical attempt to try and bring in viewership um, you know, is, is that's all the BBC care about rather than giving us fresh new television and the, you know, the ethos of change within the show. I've explained my thoughts on that. I've explained my thoughts on that in great, great detail um, in my previous video. Um, if you were to check that out. But that's essentially the only reason why the BBC are doing this. And I think the reason they're calling him the 14th Doctor is essentially just for headlines. David Tennant comes back as the 14th Doctor. He's really going to get people, you know, headlines. And newspapers are going to tune into this rather than David Tennant's coming back. Well, we saw that in Day of the Doctor, right? It's cool, but, you know, what, what of it? But David Tennant's the 14th Doctor. It's like, wow. And then it will really make people go, wow, who haven't, uh, you know, watched the show since David Tennant left, but also the people who stopped watching when David Tennant left, specifically these people, like specifically these, these people um, who stopped when David Tennant left because they were fans of David Tennant's Doctor. You know, if they weren't willing to give Matt Smith a chance, then these people clearly don't really understand the ethos of change within the show. So therefore, it wouldn't really matter to them that David Tennant's back as the 14th Doctor and, you know, they, that wouldn't, you know, register to them that actually that's a really weird thing. They just be like, wow, but David Tennant's back. I mean, it's my childhood back um, and all these sorts of things. So that's why they've labelled him as the 14th Doctor. I don't care whatever, you know, reason the RTD might have because it's so obvious that that is the reason. But the thing is, it annoys me because he isn't the 14th Doctor. He's just the 10th Doctor again. And also people say, well, he's going to be different because he has, you know, the years of experience, you know, after, you know, Dev the Doctor. So it, he, he knows that Gallifrey was saved. He had such of the guilt of the time war, you know, all throughout his run, um, that now Gallifrey was saved and all the things that have happened in Trends of Law, you know, the stuff with Missy, um, the Timeless Child. It'd be interesting to see a David Tennant Doctor, but with the knowledge of what happened after the end of time. And while I'd say that's interesting, A, realistically, those events like, I, I don't see how they would shape him that much and how they would be brought up that much, really. If anything, it just takes David Tennant's guilt away. But also, that's not the case because people seem to forget Gallifrey got destroyed again in Series 12. So ultimately, he'd, he'd still have that guilt. Um, you know, I think that a David Tennant doctor knowing that he saved Gallifrey is actually really interesting. And if anything, it's something of a bit of an untapped potential at the end of the day of the Doctor. They don't go into that as much, but that would be really interesting to see. But ultimately, seeing as Christian destroyed Gallifrey again, you're not going to get that, are you? Um, and also things like the Timeless Child in different points. I just don't see where this is going to come up or why they'd really touch on that at all, because there'd be no story reason for it to come up. And ultimately, I'm not being funny, but they're not going to touch on the Timeless Child, guys. They're not going to touch on all of this, really, because we know the 60th is going to be so focused on 2008 that the only returning elements are going to be things from RTD's era, ultimately. 
and the stories and they may involve classic villains or you know like comic book villains like beat the meep we know the celestial toy makers coming back but ultimately any returning characters and, and plot points and that side of things they're all going to be from series four because this is so d designed to be they, they a jumping on point for people who stopped watching when Tennant left so why would they touch on things massively from you know the in-between years this is another thing that annoys me he's the 14th doctor but he might as well be the 10th doctor or he might as well be the 11th doctor shooter gatwell might as well be the 11th doctor because this does feel and feel like it's going to play like you could go straight from the end of time to this and it wouldn't matter and you could treat shooty as the 11th doctor and it wouldn't really matter and that, that, that annoys me because yes i don't think that a new era of doctor who should rely on a previous era because this is supposed to be a jumping on point a fresh new start it it should really rely on none of that it should be purely creating it, its new stories which is what i'd hope shooty gat was first season would be but then just don't rely on anything like, the thing that worries me and i spoke about this before is that shooty gat was era is going to be so connected to these three specials and you know as a result so connected to not just David Tennant as the Doctor but his era to Donna Noble to to Wilf to Sylvia Noble to that you know that era of the program you know, like that's going to rely on that that not only makes it you know not a jumping on point for new fans it's just a, a re-jumping on point for old fans um you know it should be fresh it should be new and it is just relying on like RTD2 is not RTD2, it's just RTD1 continued, but you shouldn't be like relying on that. And I do have some issues with Shooty being so connected to these specials and being so connected to this era because I wanted him to be a new, it to be a new era, not, oh, it's like the continuation of Doctor in 2008. His era should stand alone as a bright, bold new era for the program, like series 5 did like series 11 did in its marketing and i guess series 11 is very connected it tried to stand above and in some ways it succeeded news was very fresh very new it was a new era for the program not connected to any others well, not only is this connecting to another era it's connecting it to two eras ago in 2008 i want shooty's era to stand alone and it would be very weird um for it to be so heavily connected to David Tennant's era because it's not a proper jumping on point and it does make this feel like we're just heavily delving into um, nostalgia and, and all, all these sorts of things and the whole idea that has plagued Hollywood and franchise IP recently um, is that you need to bring people back on board by just basing all your stories and you know, in the past, like you just bring back old things, you can't have anything new. And even if you do something new, it still has to be somehow connected to the past. Um, and any new story that doesn't work well, scrap it and bring back what people know. But that means we're never getting any new stories and we're just going around in a circle when the 80s and 90s and 2000s were so revolutionary um, and so new, um, filled with new stories. But now we're just recycling all those new stories um, when people don't forget that the reason these things are so popular in the 80s, the 70s, the 90s, the 2000s is because they were new and fresh, um, you know, they weren't based on nostalgia or the past um, and we're never going to create a new era of these things if we're, we're so indulgent in the past. It seems like the BBC were following that formula um, and I really don't understand the need to, oh, you know, let's bring in the viewers with David Tent and then hand it over to Shooty because that just feels like you have no faith in Shooty. And that really, you know, that's not the reason why you should be wanting RTD back. You should be wanting RTD back because he's an amazing writer and a writer who has changed since he left Doctor Who. So his new era of Doctor Who could be completely different yet still brilliant. Um, but it seems like you just brought RTD back because you know he can run Doctor Who. Um, that's not why I wanted him back. I, I didn't want him to hold the hands of people into this new era. I wanted it to be a bold new era. I don't understand the need to let's bring the David Tennant fans back and then hand it over to Shooty. It's not genius. Like people say, oh my god, it's genius. It's not. It, it, like, yes, in the short term, it may bring back some 2008 Doctor Who fans, but not for long, right? Because you, you, you need to see the reaction of certain people on Twitter, like, oh my god, my childhood is back. Very specifically worded, my childhood is back. 
their childhood. You've got to think how long ago that was was that era like 12 years ago? A long time. People who are most like kids or teenagers are adults and they've probably been adults for a while. People love nostalgia trips and tripping in and reliving a bit of their childhood. But it's not something people will do forever. For example, if a new Spongebob movie came out, I would watch it because it's like I loved, loved Spongebob when I was younger. So I would go watch it. It would be fun. You know, it would bring me back childhood memories, nostalgia of Spongebob. Great. But would I watch a new series of Spongebob? No, no, I wouldn't because I'm not a kid anymore. Like you can enjoy a little bit of nostalgia. But you're not going to commit to watching something purely for nostalgia episode after episode after episode because like you want to relive a bit of your childhood but at the end of the day you've grown out of that that was your childhood thing you've grown out of that you moved on to other things people want to relive a bit of their childhood for a little bit but ultimately there's a reason why it's reliving your childhood because that's your childhood you're an adult you've moved on to watching different things different shows you know it, you know people aren't going to come back and watch doctor who in my opinion, regardless of how good Shooty is, because people just don't want to commit. They don't love Doctor Who that much because it has been so long since they properly watched it. They'll tune in to watch David Tennant because it's David Tennant, it's nostalgia, but they probably won't tune into Shooty regardless of how long it is because at the end of the day, Doctor Who isn't a show for them because they've grown up. They've grown up and moved on to passages new it's not a sustainable model to pander to these fans because it's not sustainable because they won't watch the show long term or at least a lot of them won't like sure some may but a lot of them won't and it's a really toxic model to think that you can't reach any new fans and the only fans that you can get are fans who stop watching there's no new fans for you to collect so therefore you've just got to focus on the past because there's no point going in the future because you don't think you're going to get any fans that way that's a really toxic model to to be doing for your show this isn't a jumping on point it's a re-jumping on point for old fans but it's not a jumping on point for new fans and you could say well it's the 60th anniversary it's not supposed to be and i would agree with you on that score but ultimately if shooty gap was here is so heavily connected to this then that's also not going to feel like a jumping on point either and connecting it so much to this it does feel like a you're really being really disrespectful to the last 10 years of doctor who and also you're really you know you're not trying to go in a new direction it's such a thin veil of oh this is actually a new exciting direction because it's not we can see what you're doing bbc you're trying to focus in on the nostalgia to bring back the old audience and you're really threatening doctor who whose future is a result because Doctor Who is a show that has always thrived on change because that is how Doctor Who has survived it has always survived by trying to be fresh and trying to be new series one series one is so good because it's fresh it's new it's so different to what came before with Doctor Who it didn't try on rely on anything if, if anything it avoids the past and slowly drip feeds you old aspects of Doctor Who it didn't rely on the past and that is so far removed from what this current era current era even say because it you know he's doing he's doing and yet it may bring some audience members back maybe at a time when doctor who has gone so low in the public you know consciousness and the public opinion you know it's you know it's got a very you know, dodgy reputation now for not being very good it hasn't been at the top of its game for a while now and you know they the last relaunch they did with Jodie Whittaker it didn't really work in terms of getting the show back to the heights like they wanted it to so yeah maybe short term this seems as if it's the best option and hell maybe for bringing audience members back short term it is the best option but long term it really isn't because I think it will make Shooty's era suffer as a result and it will really set a bad precedent for this isn't a show that is new anymore this is a show that you can bring an old doctor back if you want to as the main doctor or you can bring an old writer back as the main writer if you want to if the show's getting stale and the thing is it will kill doctor who because doctor who has literally only survived through change i don't think people understand this doctor who as a show only survives because of change the show has never allowed itself to become too stale because it's always changing every four or five years. It's always rebooting itself in the, internally. 
every four or five years with a new main cast, a new production team, new writers, new ideas, new interpretations of the show. That the show never gets stale and it can always bring in new viewers and viewers who don't like one era can come back and like another era. Doctor Who, if it was so obsessed with itself and so obsessed with its former glories that it couldn't look into the future, would have died a long time ago, decades ago. Now, if David Tennant stays another five years and Rusty Davis stays another five years after 2010, I don't think Doctor Who is still here in 2022 because the show needs to change. Yes, short term, this may seem like the best option, but long term, you're setting a precedent that the show doesn't have to go forward because the show has always been forced to change and be fresh, even at times when I'm sure production teams wouldn't have wanted to. They wouldn't have wanted to completely change themselves. And like when David Tennant left, I'm sure the BBC didn't want to throw everything out. Like Doctor Who was so popular then, they didn't want to go in a distinctly new direction properly. They just wanted to keep riding what they thought was good. But the only reason they had to change was because that's the precedent set within Doctor Who. And regardless of probably what the BBC wanted to do at the time, ultimately that allowed Doctor Who to still keep thriving because that's just how Doctor Who worked. But now it sets a precedent for the BBC that they don't have to do that. They don't have to keep going forward because that's what the show, you know, that's what the show does. They can now go back and what if Doctor Who, you know, declines in popularity in the next decade? Do we have to bring Tennant and RTD back again? Is that the only way now to bring back popularity? Because it does really create a thing that the only era of Doctor Who and the only interpretation of Doctor Who that's popular is RTD's era of Doctor Who and is David Tennant's era of Doctor Who. When in my opinion, you bring in Shooty, um, you know, RTD's back, but you could even bring in a new writer, like preferably I will avoid a new showrunner with new ideas, with a new interpretation of Doctor Who. You know, you bring in maybe, you know, Shooty, who I actually think is the biggest name we've had in Doctor Who in terms of popularity in the public consciousness, especially with people my age, everyone knows him, like, even my friends are like, oh my god, it's Eric from Sex Education as a Doctor. People know him and would be intrigued just to see what he's like as a Doctor. Bringing a new, exciting writer with fresh ideas, this Doctor Who could have maybe reached the heights of 2010 Doctor Who, but, you know, a new golden age of Doctor Who, that could have been the case. But it's not that, it really is solidifying that 2008 Doctor Who is the only era of Doctor Who that's popular, so we have to keep going back to that every 10 years. What sort of precedent does that set on the show? And if we keep getting stuck with this interpretation of Doctor Who, with these characters, and this type of Doctor, and these types of stories, and this one writer, and this one actor, if we keep getting stuck with that, then people will get sick of it. People will get sick of it and it will get stale. And because the BBC will get cold feet, um, and this has sort of been shown to be the only way you can go with Doctor Who now, if this all of a sudden stops working, then I don't see the BBC changing the Doctor or changing the showrunner or changing the vision. I see them just cancelling it. Because the show is now shown that it can't keep changing to great success because you've halted that. And what it hasn't shown that it can't keep changing to great success, the BBC has decided that it can't keep changing. And if the BBC don't think that change from Doctor Who can keep it, you know, living, which has always been the case, if the BBC don't think that the show can do that anymore, then they'll just cancel it. And they'll cancel it and they won't bring it back unless RTD comes back. It sets a really bad precedent for the show and short term, it might work. Sure, RTD could be great and Shooty's era could be great. But long term, it's really setting a bad precedent for the show. And I'm a bit worried. I'm a bit worried. And it annoys me more because you see Shooty in videos on the YouTube channel and you see Millie Gibson and this new companion and you see her alongside Shooty. They have such great chemistry and it really makes me excited for a new era of the show. I'm getting feelings of excitement like you do when you get a new doctor, a new companion, and you're like, ah, oh, this is so exciting. Like it was when Jodie, you know, we were getting her with her companions, her costume. Same with Capaldi. Um, and it's really exciting. Side note, I feel like I've done nothing with my life because Millie Gibson is younger than me. She's young, the Doctor Who companion is younger than me. I feel so old. I mean, I'm only like two months older than her. Even so, it makes you feel like you've just done nothing with your life because she is the new companion and what am I doing? Her 
um, rapport with Shooty and interviews seems really fun and I'm really excited to see that in the same way that I'd feel excited of new change. But then again, we're not going to that straight away. We have to go through this era of nostalgia and it might be fun for a while, but it's not as exciting as new Doctor Who. It's not as exciting as a new vision for Doctor Who. And the thing is, if you were just to contain that as a bubble, that would be fine. We've got a year of nostalgia and then we can go into new things. As much as I'm really excited for the new things and it does annoy me, we have to trudge through the retreading of 2008 to get to that. You know, it's an anniversary year, I can allow it. And I understand why we're not getting Shooty straight away because filming schedules, he was busy filming Barbie, such such case in season four. I get that, right? If this is so connected to Shooty's era, then you're not gonna get that that element of change that is so exciting. You're just not gonna get that. Um, and that feels like such a shame because as a Doctor Who fan, that's what I'm really excited about. When you get any new era, it's so exciting because it's that, element of the unknown, that quantity of the unknown, that surprising feeling that you could get where anything is possible with a new era and I'm getting that so much from seeing Shooty and Millie Gibson in those interviews but if it's so connected to David Tennant's era and it's so connected to what RTD has done before and it just feels like the same Doctor Who with a new face you're just getting rid of that and that I yeah it's not gonna be feel fresh or new or you're just not gonna get that same excitement and that was my issue with the post-regeneration scene was that it just felt like callbacks to old Doctor Who where it didn't have that same freshness that same excitement that same element of surprise and you know go going into a new era that you usually feel with a post-regeneration scene and that's why I felt so cold so I was watching Clever Dick films recent documentary that he put out about the Matt Smith era. By the way, if you haven't seen that, go and watch it because it's utterly brilliant. And as someone whose first era was the Smith era and Matt Smith's my favorite doctor, if you're a long-term viewer of the channel, you know this, it was really brilliant and so well put together and such great insight into the Smith era. So definitely go check that out if you haven't already. But one of my favorite elements of that documentary was it speaking about Stephen Moffat and him coming in and the task he had once Russell and Tennant left and all the new things that he did and how fresh and new this era felt, even going down to the tone, the style of stories, the finale and how different um, that felt to an RTD finale and how fresh and magical it was just to experience this new brilliant era of Who made me really excited for a, a potential new era and seeing Shooty and Millie Gibson also made me really excited for a new era but we're not going to get that unfortunately or it doesn't seem like we are if it's so heavily connected to what we've seen before if it's just what we've seen before brought back again because they don't think that a new interpretation can work for some reason that's gonna bore me that's gonna bore me and regardless of how good these stories can be if Shooty Gat were Doctor and his tenure and his new era is so heavily connected to David Tennant then no I'm, I'm not that you know that's not gonna feel fresh that's not gonna feel new and that's not a new era that's not a new era at all and you're gonna miss that excitement and freshness that you should have from you know a new doctor and a new companion I do feel like people are only excited for nostalgic reasons but when you really sit back and think about it is it worth chucking out the excitement just for nostalgia. I don't think so, because for me, the excitement and the unknown element of a new era of Doctor Who will far, you know, exceed my excitement for an old element of Doctor Who returning. Because Doctor Who is, about a, is a show about change, about growth, is its strongest element. And, you know, I love, I love that about the show. The fact that there are so many different distinct eras it's just a shame that perhaps we may not be getting that, even though the potential is there for us to possibly get one of the best new fresh eras in, the, in, in, in Doctor Who's history with Shooty as the Doctor. It's a shame that we feel like we may not be getting that because of the BBC's internal refusal to move away from when they thought Doctor Who was a guaranteed hit. So yes, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please leave a like and drop a sub if you want to see more content on the channel. Hopefully I'll be going back to making regular videos. I say this all the time, but maybe it'll actually happen this time. Who knows? If you want to see whether that does happen, subscribe and hit the notification bell. I know people, you know, will indefinitely disagree with me because I've seen Twitter. I know people's opinions on this. Very few people actually agree with me. 
But I just think, like, I don't want this era to fail, and it's not like I have zero excitement for this era. And it's not like I'm against David Tennant coming back. I love David Tennant. He's a, a great doctor. And he's a great actor. Um, I watched Inside Man the other day. The show was all right, but David Tennant is great in it. You know, he's a great actor, and, you know, he's really great, but it's just... I don't want to see him come back like this, especially at the expense of a potential new era. But yeah, whatever you think, join for us in the comment section below. Let's have a discussion. That's always great. But yes, thank you guys for watching. And of course, goodbye.